I believe, although I'm not positive, I think we have a quorum. I, count, uh, I counted everybody but uh, Dan Cody, but I'll just run through it again. So we have Bob Lyons, Robert Burke, uh, Don Knorr, Carrie Scheffner, I saw jumped in, oh, okay. Carl Stump, and Susan West. All right, then we have a quorum and uh, we can do business. The first item of which is minutes from July 27th. This is Robert Burke. I thought the minutes were correct, so I would make a motion to approve the minutes as written. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second to that? Susan, I second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of July 27th, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it and the July 27 minutes are approved. Item number two is Pleasant View Road Reconstruction Real Estate Services. Sean, do you want to uh, take over for a while here? Sure, and I'll almost immediately turn it over to Gary Huth, who's our Assistant Director of Public Works uh, and is managing the uh, contracts for design uh, associated with Pleasant View Road reconstruction. It's a multi-year project, of course. Uh, and we finally got up to the part of uh, beginning acquisition of land interests. So it's temporary easements, permanent easements, outright relocations. Uh, I think there are only two of those on this project um, with full acquisition of those parcels, of course. Uh, and isolated just to the city and the town. But I'll let Gary take it from there. Okay. Thank you, Sean. So we are making progress on the design. We're somewhere in the 60% range. Uh, we're looking for services from a specialist to help us with all parts of real estate. That is uh, acquisition, negotiating with owners, appraisals of the property, relocation, which is a specialty of its own, where we have to acquire the entire property and move somebody to a new place. And that can entail uh, either just uh, sending them out on their own to look for a house, or it, in some cases, actually helping them house hunt. Um, and it also, uh, at times will include coordinating of the raising of those buildings to go away. Uh, there are two parcels on this project that for which we have relocations. One is at the very north end of the project. Well, I should say the north end of the main part of Pleasant View. So southwest corner at Highway 14, where the highway is going to come very close to the house. So we're going to acquire uh, enough of the parcel that the house will go away. The parcel is fairly deep. There are two parcels actually. It's two parcel depth. Uh, that's not very relevant here. Um, and there's also one that's uh, two thirds of the way up the hill. Uh, it it's, it uh, overlooks the quarry and in fact is owned by the owners of the quarry. And I think either they or closely related family members live there. So those two uh, basically will go away. The rest of the acquisition involves widening the right of way in those locations where we hadn't already done so. We're trying to get essentially 60 feet on either half of the roadway. There are going to be some exceptions where we have to swerve wide, uh, for example, uh, by the big anchor pole for the ATC, uh, let's see, American Transmission, ATC company. <clears throat> uh, we have to stay away from that base so as not to undermine its <coughs> right of way a little bit east. Um, at the intersection with Blackhawk, we actually have a little bit more than the usual 60 on the westerly half to accommodate turn lanes. Uh, but essentially, we're looking for a, a more or less uniform corridor, a total of 120 feet in width. And we also need a combination of temporary and permanent easements 
along this corridor. And the, the map that we sent out illustrates those in a, uh, in a preliminary fashion, at least. I think they're fairly close. Uh, it may not be very easy to interpret at this stage because it is a preliminary document. So ideally, we would have a final right-of-way plat by this time, but where the clock is ticking, and when I talked to our uh, potential consultants, uh, they were concerned that we had, they thought having about 16 months left would just barely be enough time. So we're not getting started any too soon here. Unfortunately, uh, some of the work just can't get going until the right-of-way plat is actually completed. I think they can do some groundwork ahead of time. Uh, the, but the right-of-way plat itself can't be completed until the environmental report and the engineering study report are both completed and approved by DOT. The environmental report is more or less done. We had to, uh, we were going to have to hold a public hearing, which in the era of COVID would be rather difficult. And in the end, because of the public feedback we had gotten so far, DOT waived the requirement that, so we don't have to try to conduct a meeting. So that's moving forward very nicely. The engineering study report was ready to go into its final run, but DOT threw us a rather nice curveball in that they're offering now, uh, just as of this past week, to pick up the entire cost of the intersection of Pleasant View and 14. That's all four legs. Strand <coughs> had begun the design with the assumption that they would fully improve that intersection to bring it up to modern safety standards. Uh, but then they decided, well, DOT is not able to come up with uh, enough funding. We're going to leave uh, the ultimate design to a later year and let DOT improve its own highway. So we scaled it back, or we were in, in the process of starting to scale it back. DOT came back with an offer. They will pay all of the costs, the state's share and the entire local share for both east and west legs entirely, the north leg entirely, and about 350 feet of the south leg of Pleasant View, all of which would have been our responsibility. Uh, and they will do the expanded version of it, which we already have a preliminary design for. In exchange, they're asking that the city complete the final design and pick up that cost. Uh, so it's, it's tens of thousands for many hundreds of thousands. So it's a very good deal for the city. Uh, so we are proceeding in that direction. Um, I don't think that's going to affect the um, right of way acquisition because everything that's being done on 14 that's going to be expanded now is still going to be within the existing right of way. Um, just as an FYI, there are two exceptions. One is DOT is not paying for the railroad crossing on Pleasant View, and it is not yet known who's going to pick up the cost for the rail spur, uh, which is private that crosses US 14. So uh, in any case, uh, we attempted to contact four firms. Uh, all four of them were very excited to respond. Unfortunately, two of them backed out at the last minute and were left with two proposals. They're uh, reasonably close in price. I think both firms are very well qualified and they're, they're highly regarded by DOT. Uh, by the way, they have to be on DOT's approved list in order to even be invited. Um, and um, one of the firms, actually the lower in priced firm, uh, gave all indication that they could do the project, but as far as taking the final exam, responding to the RFP, uh, they did not complete the, all the requested items. 
So for example, they didn't submit resumes of the people involved, for example. Um, so um, on that basis, the other firm, uh, which is CORE, with uh, two R's and an E, uh, was fully responsive. I could not find a single thing they left out. In fact, some things they had in there two different ways. So uh, on the basis of the completeness of the proposal, I'm recommending that uh, the committee recommend to the council to enter into agreement with them. I hope that wasn't too much information. No, I don't think it was. Committee members have questions? This is Robert. Uh, I have a question for Gary. Um, yeah, I, I thought core looked really good. Um, and, and the, the, it's like they're just under $4,000 more. So it was like 90,000 something versus 36,000 or sorry, not 86,000 something, I think. That sounds close. Yep. Um, and so, you know, given the fact that they'll give us everything that we've asked for. Um, I don't think that $4,000 is worth going to the, the least, the less complete um, applicant. Um, but I do have a question that is, um, this, this costed all, all their services, obviously buying people's properties um, and, and, you know, getting right of ways, you know, cost cost additional money later on down the road, uh, purchasing land or whatever, I assume. Uh, do we have any ideas or is that part of this project that we will find out how much the city might end up having to be on the hook for uh, acquisition of land? Strand has some rules of thumb that they use for projects like this. A dollar a square foot for temporary easements, something like nine dollars a square foot for permanent easements, and ten dollars for actual acquisition. The relocations, I think we got some numbers from the assessor. Uh, it all told came out to, if I'm remembering correctly, 3.6 million. John, does that sound right? Is that the number I forwarded I, to you the other day? I thought it was higher. I did put that in next year's capital budget request as a TIF um, funded capital item. And I was thinking it was higher than that, but I, I wrote it down, I don't have it with me. Yeah, I, I apologize, I'm not seeing it in front of me either. But uh, it's a substantial cost, Robert, you're absolutely right. Um, so, uh, I, I should point out too that I mentioned this in the memo that because we're working off of a preliminary plat, the way that the parcel numbers are carved up, it might change. And because typically firms of this type will base their cost on a per parcel basis, Cases. It doesn't matter how big the parcel is in many cases, buying it is buying it. So, and, and drawing up a description is, is not that much harder if it's 100 yards across or 20 feet across. So, uh, when, the, when the final plat is ready, it's possible that there's going to be a little bit of a difference. For some reason, Strand prepared this preliminary draft and they lumped all of the city parcels in as one parcel. They gave them all the same ID. That may be harmless for three of those, which might be lumped together because they're just uh, public lands. The city can easily afford to lose some right of way. But the fourth one is the golf course. And I'm pretty confident that they're going to be uh, interests within the city that the golf course be handled uh, as a special case and that uh, we look at that as a completely separate stand on its own parcel. So it's possible that some adjustment to this agreement might be needed once that final uh, plat is prepared. I just want to give you a, a, a heads up on that. So if, if we're looking at uh, we're, we're looking at somewhere between 60 and 26 parcels, depending on how one counts these. So, um, 
Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I think I think for the purposes of today, um, I have no further questions. I think there will be further questions at finance and council. Gary, I have a couple of questions. Um, have, has the city worked or have you worked with uh, this firm before, CORE Incorporated? No, I have not, uh, but I spoke with DOT and I spoke with City of Madison and both firms are highly recommended. Okay. Um, my so second one, question so was- Bob, Bob one, one slight uh, item in favor of CORE might be that uh, DOT expressly stated that they have had uh, a little better time working with a firm where everything is under one roof. And in the case of Miesbauer, he's subcontracting out for the appraisal portion. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I don't think that would be a, an issue, but um, I'm just passing along DOT's experience. All right, my second question was, in, in addition to the number that's listed on the agenda, 90,562 and 70 cents, there also uh, was listed um, just kind of an open item of reimbursable expenses, as I recall, that weren't incorporated in this number. So the reimbursable expenses go into adding up to a total. So do the individual parcel appraisals and acquisitions and negotiations. All of those things go into adding up. But the way they uh, will bill us is uh, in accordance with how they describe they're going to do the acquisition costs. The way they're going to bill us is uh, any, any expenses will be billed at cost. Many firms like to tag on 10 or 15% pass through on that, we don't allow that. But the bottom line is, and I made this very clear to everybody, the, the bottom line total is the not to be exceeded. So buried in that bottom line of 90 comma five are whatever expenses they may have. If they got lucky and had no expenses, then maybe we only spend 90,000 even, but uh, surely there will be some expenses. My they list. have $852 of expenses in that 90,000 according to their proposal. Yeah, it's built in basically is the short answer. Okay. Uh, further questions, committee members? Not really a question, just uh, pointing out, it uh, looks to be a, um, a woman owned business with a lot of women employees too. So I, I think that's a, I don't think that that's necessary, but it's, I think it's kind of a nice to have anyway. So just thought I'd point it out if, if people hadn't really looked through the, uh, the resumes. Yeah, I did. Any other questions or comments committee? If not, are we ready for a motion? I would make the motion that we, oh, oh sorry. No, go ahead, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I guess I would make the motion that we we recommend um, core um, as the proposal to to move forward to finance and common council uh, in an in an amount not to exceed ninety thousand five hundred sixty two and seventy cents. All right, is there a second to that motion? This is Carrie. I will second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Questions? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that will be our recommendation of the Finance Committee and the Council. Great. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. And Sean, thank you for coming in. Is there anything before? we need to talk about before we move to adjourn? Uh, no, nothing at all. <laughs> Good. I'll let, I'll let the chair, uh, I'll let the chair ask for a motion then. If, is there a motion to adjourn? 
I'm I'm chopping at the bit. Yeah, uh, this is Robert. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Here he is. A second. second that motion. All right. A motion and a second to adjourn. Any discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and we are adjourned. Thank thanks. you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks for getting together for such cool. a little but important thing. It is important. Sean, so thanks. Sean, I have a question when everybody gets off.